In the light of the bailouts for Greece and Ireland and the ongoing problems for Portugal and Spain, is the euro doomed? Is the euro doomed, Nigel Farage? <laughs> <laughs> well, Simple in it, question. In its current structure, yes, of course it's doomed. It was always going to be doomed. You know, if you go back just over ten years to when the euro was launched, uh, it was pretty obvious then that there were countries that were never, ever going to fit into that euro mould. It was obvious that Ireland, it was obvious that Greece, it was obvious that Portugal weren't going to fit it. Because remember that the euro wasn't launched for economics, it was launched for political reasons. And the people that support the euro are the people that want to build a new United States of Europe. Uh, they want to do it whether the peoples want it or not. They intend to imp impose it upon them. And there are some on this panel who, despite the catastrophe of the exchange rate mechanism in the early 1990s, still thought ten years ago that Britain should have joined the euro. Thank goodness we didn't join the euro. That was a very, very good thing. It was a great victory for common sense, a great victory for public opinion. But I'm afraid what has happened in Ireland uh, this week is no more than a sticking plaster over the problem. Um, I've no doubt that it'll be Portugal next. It may be Belgium uh, thereafter, my favourite country. Um, <laughs> and, and if it gets to Spain, if we have to bail out Spain, then remember that the Spanish economy, the Spanish debt, is seven times that of Ireland. At that point, all the money will have run mm. out. The euro will not continue to exist in its current form, and frankly, thank goodness for that, because these countries like Greece and Ireland are trapped inside an economic prison. What they need now desperately is to get their own countries back, to devalue, and to get back to running their own economies, and the sooner it happens, the better. Mm. Well, there are so many quotations, Ken Clark, of what you said <laughs> about, about joining the Euro, but perhaps the best one is when you said to Tony Blair, mm. I believe if you miss the opportunity to stay out too long, it'll do great harm to this country. Were you wrong about the Euro, and is it now doomed? I haven't changed my mind at all. Paddy and I, I think, had a lot of conversations with Tony Blair. Uh, early on in uh, well, we thought he should get the referendum in principle over, but that's all under the bit. Britain's not going to join the euro now, I quite accept that. But I, uh, British commentators have been forecasting, it's a feature of the British debate, a uh, sort of hangover from all our war, that they forecast the death of the euro about once every six months. I happen to believe that one of the things that's unlikely to happen is the end of the euro. Indeed, it's quite obvious there's a great political commitment mm. to it. And the British keep distorting it, saying, mm. well, it must be something to do with that euro. So is the euro, is the euro, is the euro a good thing, in your view? It's very good for the eurozone. If the Greeks and the Irish had not been in the euro, uh, I don't know where they'd be now, because they'd be both very, very belly up and uh, the equivalent of defaulting Central American states in the past. So long they term, are being would, rescued. Would you the, still like to see Britain in the euro? In the I don't. Well, no, I, I, it, it, this government's not going to join the euro. I, I didn't but, ask you that. I said, would you still like to see Britain I have in no the idea. euro? It's not going to happen in you my You have no day. idea whether you I, have an idea. Well, no. <laughs> I know what's happened. The country has acquired a fixation about the euro, and the idea is you that have a fixation no. about it. Now, if at some point in the future we look, and if it does become in the interest of British workers, of course we should look at it again. And that, why, Nigel, even if it was in the interest of giving British workers, away, you would say Gloria, no. Gloria, giving away control over interest rates and your own economy is a stupid thing to do, and it's if something it's that tens that of millions of people are addressing over here. Glory, Gordon Brown had taken a good look at the economic facts. We wouldn't be in this mess. Tony <laughs> 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 Ashton, since I quoted his remarks to Ken Clark, I quote yours to you. I believe the result of, uh, rev of entering the euro would be immediately beneficial to the Chancellor in his predicament and to the country. Lower pound, lower interest rates, more inward investment, real boost to the government standing in Europe. 1998. You withdraw all that now in the light of what's happened? Absolutely not. <laughs> Germany and France did not go down as far as we did into this, this recession and are coming out of it sooner and stronger. That's where we could have been if we'd have taken that decision in 1997. <laughs> it's all very well to debate this, but surely this is a decision that Germany is going to make. 51% of their population want the Deutsche Mark back. This will be a decision that Germany will make. When you say they want the Deutsche Mark back, right. do you think that they'll get it back? I personally Nigel believe, Farage, well, I mean, it's very interesting, but of course the Germans were taken in. Only two countries in the whole of the European Union were given referendums on joining the Euro, Sweden and Denmark, and they both said no. no. 
So this was imposed upon the peoples of Europe by this political class that have, that, that have had this dream for 50 years of building a United States of Europe, but the peoples of Europe don't want it. I was in Berlin recently at a conference, and I was amazed. There were hundreds of people turning up to say, we want the Deutschmark back. I think, if, if anybody busts this European Union as it is, I sense you're right. It may well be the German people who say we're being dragged down by everybody else. Well, that, that's that's right. well, that, Nigel, it, it, this is a total irrelevance, uh, really. It's a debate I've enjoyed having in the past, but it's nothing to do with where we are. The, the gentleman quite rightly says we have to sort it out. He's already talked about We're the global mess, we? process. No, all this, the old problem. argument about the euro, frankly, yeah. in my opinion, is a complete sideshow. So it why, if that's true, that. wait, everyone, why, if that's true, did your Foreign Secretary, William Hague, ask when asked if the euro could be destroyed, instead of saying, like you say, no, that was a ridiculous knock, he said, who knows? Was well, that I, 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 I'm happy to know it with William. My own, I'm giving you my opinion. Do you, uh, you as, agree? As, 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 as a, as a former Chancellor, as I was modestly uh, taking part in some of these discussions, I, I don't personally think the euro will go. Before I come to you, Nigel Farage, just remind people of the quote. We're going to have a system where the middle classes are discouraged from breeding because it's jolly expensive, but for those on benefits, there's every incentive. Well, that's not very sensible. What's your reaction? Well, I mean, Howard Flight has his own way of putting things. Um, and his comments, may have offended, his comments may have offended people, but just remember, Howard Flight has a record on this because in 2005 he said we are borrowing and spending too much money as a country, the next government needs to cut by at least 20 billion, and this was considered an outrage, a total heresy. Well, five years on we can see that actually Howard Flight was spot on. We were borrowing too much and we were spending too much. Now look, there is no doubt about it that the hard-pressed middle-income people in this country are being very badly hit by increased taxes, by an increased cost of living, which I think everybody feels, whether it's petrol or electricity prices or whatever it is, and that the withdrawal of child maintenance is a factor, and people, you know, people will have less children if they haven't got as much money, and there's a feeling that Howard Flight is expressing that perhaps it's wrong that those that have got nothing if they're single and 16 years old and have a child, get a council house. All right? So he may have used, he may have used colourful language, it may have offended some people, but for goodness sake, can we have some grown-up politics in this country where people are allowed to express an opinion without being shouted down by all okay. and sundry? So you rather agree with what he said? Does this week's immigration cap match the Prime Minister's uh, rhetoric? This week's immigration cap, this is Theresa May as Home Secretary, is proposing 20, just over 21,000 cap for non-EU immigrants. Um, does it match the Prime Minister's rhetoric, which was rather fiercer at the time of the election? Man in the second row from the back. It's all fine and well having a cap on non-EU migrants, but surely you need to sort out the problem of European migrants, because in my opinion there's too many of them coming over and taking jobs which could be given to the British unemployed. <laughs> Nigel Farage. Uh, yeah, look, this whole argument's a nonsense, isn't it? Because all the government and all the opposition do is talk about non-EU migration, the area over which we still just about have some control, although the EU wants to take that over as well in the course of the next couple of years. Look, if we want people, skilled people, to come to work in our country, industry needs them, um, what's left of the City of London needs them, then that's fine. You give people work permits. But what we've done to the whole of Eastern Europe is we've said as many millions of you that want to come to Britain can come. There are absolutely no controls whatsoever. And after a short period of time, you can settle here, you can bring your extended family and what it's led to. And, you know, we've all seen it since 2004. We've seen the ghettoisation of our cities, of our market towns. We've seen an awful lot of people who could have got jobs that sadly haven't got those jobs. And it's led to increased bad feeling in society. I am not opposed to immigration. I think on balance, Paddy, you're right. Much of the immigration into Britain has been good. But it is utterly irresponsible and stupid to give away control of your immigration policy to the European Union. And it's one of the reasons why, if we want to control who lives, works and settles in this country, we have to leave the European Union, follow the lead the Daily Express has given us today, and one of the first things we can do <coughs> is take back control of immigration. Right. We have to do it. Go over here. In view of the current austerity measures, is it a ludicrous waste of money to commission a £2 million survey to evaluate the happiness of the British public?
Nigel Farage. I think the answer to the question is yes. Yes to what question? You know, yes. Is it I, a think waste of I think it is a. I think, I think the whole thing's complete baloney. You know, whilst whilst you can't measure happiness in life just by GDP and just by wealth, what criteria would you use? You know, if you if you did this survey the day after England had won the Ashes against Australia, <laughs> oh gosh, that's rather optimistic after what happened last night. But if, you know, if, if if you did it then, people would feel happier. Um, you know, if you ask people, um, you know, are they starving, and they said no, you'd say, well, look, people are happy. But what, what if you ask people, do they like politicians? What if you ask, <laughs> well, I mean, it's just worth trying. What if you asked, um, what if you asked smokers whether they were happy that they can't smoke in their pub? What if you asked commuters from Maidstone whether they enjoyed going up to London and back every day? You know, what criteria would you use to establish this? I think the whole thing is nonsense. But that's okay. true, but All right. <laughs> To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.